I'm Fiona Colley and uh, I'm a councillor in Southwark and I'm the cabinet member for Regeneration. And uh, we're stood here in the shadow of the Strata building and behind us is uh, the Haygate estate. But um, what's your sort of overall vi uh, vision for Elephant Castle? What will people be seeing if they come here in five years time or ten years time? Well for a start we hope it'll start to be somewhere that people want to come and visit and to live and to shop and to work. Uh, at the moment the area's got a bit of a reputation for being run down, a concrete jungle. Uh, and we really want to see that change. This is a central London location. Uh, and it should be an area that people are proud to live in. And Southwark's um, housing waiting list is on a, at a critical level with some people having to wait seven years for a home. Uh, in that context, is it wise to demolish a very large um, council estate with th thousands of affordable homes and replace it with what some would see as more kind of upmarket um, type developments? Well, the challenges with the Haygate were that uh, whether we rebuilt the uh, area or whether we uh, continued to maintain its council homes, it was going to be extremely expensive either way. Uh, and the opportunity arose for us really to, uh, to change the area as well as deliver new affordable homes that are for much higher quality than uh, the current Haygate. The plans include not just the 625 plus new affordable homes on the Haygate site, but also about another 700 or more affordable homes in neighbouring areas. So overall we will see an increase in affordable housing uh, in the Elephant and Castle area, albeit not on this particular site. But of course that's part of our plans as well. We don't think it's a good thing that you have all affordable housing on one site and all expensive homes on another site. The new uh, area behind us, when it's rebuilt, will be a mixture of private housing, shared ownership housing and social rented housing uh, so that you'll have a properly mixed community. Some critics suggest that the new so-called affordable homes will be less affordable than the existing council stock. So will the new homes be affordable to those with the lowest incomes? Well that's certainly a challenge for us and I think uh, many of them will be affordable for, for people on very low incomes. Uh, in Southwark we are uh, opposing the, the government's plans to uh, change the definition of affordable housing. Certainly the Conservative government is very keen that uh, housing associations should be able to charge up to 80% of market rent and we don't believe that's affordable for people. We want to make sure that the new homes are being built at a mix of tenures, so certainly some homes that are being built at the kind of rates, rents that are equivalent to current council and housing association rents, which are around 35% of private market rents, uh, as well as some shared ownership homes, because many people who are on on middle incomes and low incomes who want to own homes can't afford private ownership uh, in London so it's important to make sure we've got those sorts of homes as well and as well as the full outright ownership. We still don't expect Elephant Castle is going to be a tremendously expensive place to live compared to say the Riverside and the South Bank or West, you know, Westminster um, but uh, we do think there's a, a need for a mixture of tenures on this area. Um, you said you hope Elephant Castle still won't be too expensive a place to live. Um, but if you look at a lot of the marketing literature by some of the developers, it's very much geared towards international uh, investors who want to buy to let. So is there a risk that uh, the international market could uh, push up the prices? Because they seem to sort of openly, they're openly happy that in their terms, the London housing market suffers from a lack of, de uh, a lack of supply and a high demand. In other words, there aren't enough houses and too many people want to live with them, which is great if you can afford to buy to rent. So is there a problem that the international market will make things unaffordable? I mean, I think it's important to remember that when those homes are built, bought up by international investors, that doesn't necessarily mean that they aren't lived in by local people. I mean, the private rented sector is very important too, because they're as you've said, we've got 20,000 people on our waiting list. We won't be able to house all of them. And many of those people uh, will rely on the private rented sector in order to find somewhere to live. So that is an important sector, although I would like to see the government take steps to regulate that market to ensure we get reasonable rents and security of tenure in the private rented sector as well as the social rented sector. Um, I think it's understandable really that big developers will look overseas as well as in the UK when they're trying to sell their properties off plan. It is difficult for them to get finance at the moment, um, so they'll look to sell them wherever they can. But uh, I'm sure we'll see plenty of local people, and Londoners and British people buying those homes as well. But if a local family was to uh, rent a house off an international investor, and the, the chances are it would be more expensive probably than, than say 
uh, a council flat rented from the council? Well, I mean, it would be, but uh, the family may or may not qualify for a council flat. As you said, we've got 20,000 people on our waiting list, even though we are one of uh, the UK's biggest social landlords. Uh, so demand for housing certainly outstrips supply, and not everyone is going to be able to be housed by the council, uh, regardless of uh, whether we knock down the Haygate or build the new homes or not. We will see far more homes on this site than we have at the moment, uh, and... You know, clearly private sector rents are set by the market and what people are willing to pay versus uh, what people, what supply there is. And I don't think it makes very much difference whether people's private sector landlord lives in the Far East or lives in London. Uh, the buy-to-let market is, I'm sure, here to stay. Uh, and I would, as I say, like to see a bit more regulation in the private rented sector to make that more stable and secure for people. Um, but that is an important option for many people in London. Um, you've talked about the introduction of mixed tenure as opposed to a, a large council rented development. Isn't the flip side of that the displacement of a large working class community? And uh, some people seem to see, uh, see this as gentrification and do you think that's a fair assessment? No, I don't think that is a fair assessment actually. I think it's quite a naive assessment in fact. Um, what we see increasingly on council estates because of the shortage of supply uh, and because of the rules around who gets to the top of the list is it's very rarely now working class people and working people who get uh, places on council estates so in fact what you I'm sad to say you often get a council estates that are full of people who aren't working and, and are on benefits although many of them trying to get into work um, so I think having a mixed tenure uh, area is much better certainly for kids growing up for them to grow up in an area where there's a mixture of people, people who are working as well as people who are out of work uh, and I do think that's a much better uh, environment for everybody. The developer claims that this is going to be a sustainable development uh, but is it really sustainable to knock down uh, thousands of structurally sound homes uh, only 35 years after their completion and fell lots and lots of mature trees? Uh, can, can that really be described as sustainable development? Well, we aren't felling lots and lots of mature trees. Actually, in the latest version of the master plan, we're saving an awful lot of the mature trees. Uh, and that's a really important thing that we were welcoming. It was feedback from the public consultation that people wanted us to do that. We're creating uh, a very large new park, uh, which is the largest new central London park for 70 years. Uh, and I think the main lesson we have to learn from the homes that were built 35 years ago is that the homes we built in the future need to be have a much longer lifespan. These homes simply didn't turn out to be built to last. But they are structurally sound according to the council's own uh, survey, so would there not be a case for maybe refurbishing them? Because um, a lot of people have suggested that for approximately half the Haygate's life it didn't really have any uh, adequate money on upkeep spent on it. I think that was, uh, that was certainly a problem in the 1980s, but it was a problem that you will always face when you have to keep rents low to keep them affordable that you aren't going to have a lot of money for maintenance so they turned out to be high cost to maintain uh, the heating systems were failing and needed replacing if you talk to people now who live on the Aylesbury estate you'll find that the vast majority of them can't wait for their, those homes to be knocked down to have the new homes to move into um, because their heating keeps breaking down I get emails every week telling me the heating is down again the power's gone off these are not good quality homes and they are not homes that we can afford to maintain. Building new, high quality, sustainable, environmentally friendly homes is definitely the right way to go.